Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton. So I'm going to show you guys how to connect to a remote database on Heroku. This does require you to have a credit or debit card attached to your account. So make sure you have that already, because if you don't, you won't be able to add add-ons to your Heroku application. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is obviously make sure you have your Heroku account, make sure you have your credit or debit card attached, and we're going to create a new application, and I'm going to call this whatever I want. So we're just going to call this uh, test MySQL DB connection. Again, call it whatever you want. We're going to create an application. And now what we're going to do is we're going to ignore all this because you actually don't need your application to be running any processes to connect to the database. OK, if we just add the database to our application, it's going to be online. OK, so we, so assuming that you don't have a project and you just need the database just for the connection, you don't need to you know put your project on Heroku. OK, but again, if you know how to connect your application, to Heroku and deploy on Heroku, then th it shouldn't be too hard. Okay, I have, I have videos showing you guys how to deploy your bots or deploy your applications to Heroku. So the only additional thing that you have to do is go over to resources, click find more add-ons, and there are so many add-ons, okay? But we're only gonna focus on MySQL. There are actually many different types of MySQL servers that they have. They have JAWS DB, they have Clear DB MySQL, they have MS SQL, which is Microsoft SQL, uh, they have uh, they even have, you know, MongoDB, which is a no relational database. They have Postgres SQL. They have Redis Cache. They have so many things. So I would urge you guys to check this out because Heroku, I really like Heroku. Okay, but I personally prefer using DigitalOcean. So we're going to go over and just click on ClearDB MySQL. And we're going to go ahead and install ClearDB. So we're going to go ahead and type in our application. So test the MySQL DB connection. We're going to provision this add-on and there we go. We have it all set up. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click over here. So inside the resources tab, we're going to just click on this little link and it's going to take us to our database portal. And this is where we're going to get all of our remote information. So right over here, this is the database name. So let's save that. So we can then click on the database over here and we can click on system information and we can get the username. So I'm going to copy that. And then we can get the password. Okay, now the next thing that we need is the host of our Heroku MySQL database. So to get that, we can go over to settings and we can go over to reveal config vars. And this is a MySQL URI. And the MySQL URI follows this simple pattern where you have the MySQL colon slash slash, which means that this is a MySQL URI. Everything from here all the way up until here, the colon, is the username okay notice how it matches the username over here and after the colon and before the at sign is the password and after the at sign up to the slash is the host okay so let me label this okay notice how uh, this uri targets this database okay so we're just going to get rid of all of this now okay so now we're going to go ahead and connect to our database so i'm just going to go ahead and go Get the credentials. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do MySQL hyphen U. So we need the user name. So that's going to be this string right over here. So we're just going to copy that. And we're going to do hyphen P for password and then hyphen H. Okay, and uh, for the host, we're going to copy this string over here and we're going to paste that. And we're just going to pass in the password. So let's just pass it in. Okay, and we're connected and we can go ahead and do show databases to list all the databases. It's going to be a little bit laggy because obviously we're connecting to our remote server. And you can see we have two databases. The one that we're using is this one over here. So that's Horoku underscore and then this whole string over here. So let's just copy this and let's just do use. And okay, it says database change. So if I try to show the tables, you're going to see it says empty set. And if I go ahead and click on performance tab and if I refresh we can see that we have a connection to this database okay and I can do a bunch of other stuff too I can go ahead and create a table so I can do create table users and I can define the columns so let's just do username varchar255 and I can insert into users username values Anson insert into and then users values so it's not case sensitive okay we can also do uh let's just say john and then let's do a simple select from 
users. So we're going to select all columns and all records from users. And we're going to, and you can see we have our simple table. Okay. And we can also kill the connection directly from here. So if we click the X, and if I try to do a show tables, you're gonna see it says lost connection to my SQL server during query. Uh, you can also reset the password too by just going over here and just clicking reset. And I'm gonna show you guys how to connect to the SQL server via script. So you wanna make sure you have a MySQL driver installed. So for this tutorial, we're just gonna use the MySQL driver the most basic one you can install it by typing npm i mysql okay and that'll install the driver for you so in visual studio code i have a simple example over here you're going to require the mysql module and then you're going to go ahead and invoke the create connection function and inside this object over here you're going to pass in the connection details for host we're going to pass in the host over here let's copy that so for user, we're going to pass in our username. For the password, we're going to pass in our password. And then now we have to specify the database that we want our connection to start off in. So the database name is going to be this string over here. So database. Okay. Now if I save, and if I go ahead and execute this code, you're going to see that it's going to say connected. And we can even create a simple query. We can do con.query. And then we can go ahead and do a simple SQL statement. So select from users. Okay, this should just select all of the records, all the columns from our table. And this takes in the callback function. So error results, if error, throw error. And we're gonna log the results to console. If I save, it should give us an array of all of our rows. Okay, and you can see we have username, username. And likewise, we can also insert stuff into our database as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I highly suggest you guys to install the MySQL server because sometimes you might need to step into your database manually and check the values. And it's just so much easier to do it using the MySQL CLI tool instead of doing it via script. Okay, and if you wanted to use an ORM like SQLize or your own or, or like some other MySQL driver, you can just follow the documentation. It'll show you how to connect to it but you have your information. I showed you guys how to get the details. Okay, and I showed you guys how to make simple queries. And let's do a simple insert. So let's do insert into users values and let's just do Kelsey. Okay, and if there's any errors, should be okay. All right, so if I save and let's just run our Application again, you can see it says okay. And if I want to verify that uh, it was inserted, we can go ahead and connect to our database again. Pass the password, and you can see we can go ahead and step into the database that we want. So let's use this, okay. And let's do show tables, select from users. And there you go, we have our data in our database. Okay, and like I said, there's a size limit of five megabytes in terms of storage. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully this helped you guys out. And if you guys want, I'll do um, another video on how to do this in with MongoDB. I'll probably do it anyways, because I know there's gonna be people who want to you know, know how to connect this with MongoDB. But if you understand how to do this with MySQL, connecting it with MongoDB, with PostgreSQL, and other database engines shouldn't be too difficult. So I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.